What's up guys, Ben here with DigiTrigger. If you're tuning in, that means you got your DigiTrigger 2.2 and you are ready to do the install. First thing is you wanna take your factory trigger out, all right, and you wanna save your trigger pins. That's all you're gonna need from your factory trigger, all right, or just your two standard roll pins. Okay, tools, what you're gonna want is uh, you probably already use this to take your trigger apart, but you want some kind of punch. One eighth punch is fine. Uh, you're going to need two drivers, okay? A T10 and a T15 Torx driver. You need a 7 16 driver of some kind. You can get away with a crescent wrench, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you have the driver, that's going to make it a lot easier. All right, and that should be about it. That's all you need. So what we're going to do is, first thing is the trigger group, all right? Your replacing your mechanical trigger group with our mechanical trigger group. So ours is a few more parts in a standard trigger. You have your trigger, you have your sear, and you have your disconnector. Unlike a standard mil spec trigger, which is one piece and a disconnector, we have two pieces and a disconnector, okay? So that's your first component that's gonna drop in. And then we have our own hammer. Please don't try and reuse your mil spec hammer. You have to use ours. It does, however, use a standard mil spec spring. Okay, so before we drop that in, what we have to do is we have to drop in the grip fastener and the little piece of metal that connects it all, your trigger connector. Okay, your trigger connector has two legs, a shorter and a longer one. It only goes in one way, so you just drop your trigger connector in, okay? Like I said, you can't screw it up because the long leg will not go in, then with the keyed end to the rear, you screw in your grip fastener and there's a little valley, a little groove that aligns with that trigger connector, all right? Remember, don't force anything here. It's all gonna go together smoothly. So you screw that in till it bottoms out. All right, as soon as it bottoms out, we're gonna back it out so that the leg of the trigger connector is to the left of your lower. Now, this is probably the hardest step of the whole install, all right? There is a groove, or a uh, excuse me, a slot on the back of the trigger that aligns with that first leg of the trigger connector, and there's a little bit of a trick to it. All right, now don't try and put it all in at the same time. That's just going to be a mess. So you're going to drop your trigger in, okay? And the trick is I rotate the grip fastener so that the trigger connector is facing the trigger. Right, it's in the bottom center position, and then visually inspecting. I line up the trigger connector and I just kind of rotate it into the slot of the trigger, okay? And it kind of pops in there when you when you get it and it, it, you can't really damage it, but just kind of go easy on it. Just work it back and forth until you get everything to line up, all right? And then you rotate your grip fastener so that that leg is to the left, all right? And this thing is keyed. It's gonna align with the grip chassis later. Okay, but that is gonna be the hardest step of the whole install, really. So if you get through that, it's all downhill. All right, now, you can combine steps if you start to get really good at this, or if you've done a lot of triggers, you can do the sear and the disconnector at the same time. I recommend one at a time just to make things easy. And remember, guys, we have springs here, so please use some kind of safety goggles, or me, I'm lucky I wear glasses. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna drop the sear in, make sure it's on top of the spring. Your trigger pin has to be grooved to the right side of the lower, okay? So I use it to start aligning things and you might have to put a little English on there. All right, and I use that to align the sear and the trigger, okay? Don't push it all the way through because you need to leave room for your disconnector. All right, then the disconnector goes next. And again, if you've done this quite a few times, this is easy. You can probably do it by hand, if not, can get a little mallet, knock those pins in. Um, okay, so now your trigger, sear, and disconnector are in place, and you know it's attached because when you pull the trigger, you can see the trigger connector move and reciprocate with the trigger pull. All right, next you put your hammer in just like you would a standard mil spec hammer. All right, make sure the legs go in and don't get caught on anything. Make sure the spring orientation is correct. And again, if you've done this a few times, you might not need a mallet. If not, it's no big deal. Sometimes they're really tight. You have to tap them in there. All right, now your mechanical trigger group is in and you wanna give it a little test run, okay? Make sure everything 
is jiving, make sure it's working. All right, don't let your hammer drop. All right, it could damage your lower. So I like to put my hand there. All right, make sure it releases freely. Make sure that when you're squeezing the trigger, the disconnector hook catches the hammer and releases it correctly. All right. If anything seems weird here, feel free to contact us. It's info at digitrigger.com or you can call the number on the website. We'll have somebody there to answer and answer any questions. But you just want to verify your mechanical trigger group works. All right. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to drop the digital control unit in. All right. The interface point is the grip chassis. All right. Now, yours is going to be black. This one is still unfinished. We're still a little early here. So this only goes on one way. All right, the screw is keyed. All right, just gonna go ahead, get it over the trigger connector. Make sure you're not damaging it or getting it caught. All right, you have your quarter 28 lock nut. You can start it by hand. And then what I do is I use the driver to bottom it out. And as soon as it bottoms out, you give it about an eighth to a quarter turn. And that is plenty of torque. The spec is 30 inch pounds if you do have a torque wrench. All right, the trigger housing has a roller in it, okay? Be careful with this assembly. There's a ball bearing, a very small spring. If they pop out on you, they can shoot across the room and everything like that. So you would have to find the parts and reassemble it. So try not to drop it or anything like that. The way this goes in is you make sure your, your trigger connector, the leg is perpendicular and you just kind of drop it in and you can see visually if it interfaces with the trigger wheel. There's a window on the side. We'll have some close-ups here in a second. And you make sure that when you move the trigger, that roller moves with it. And now you're ready to put your selector in. Your detent is going to go in next. And then the final component before you can put your grip on is the sear ram. Pointy end forward, all right? It's really important you don't reverse that. Pointy end towards the trigger group. Okay, now your grip assembly comes pre-assembled, okay, and tested at the factory. So you go ahead, you take the back strap off, you remove the main screw, and the left grip panel comes off. So all we do is we take our grip, and you just slide it up the grip chassis. And don't force anything here, it's made to go together nice and smoothly. Make sure that you're paying attention to the micro switch. Make sure you're not damaging it, getting it caught on anything. All right, now we're gonna do our first little test before we put the rest of this together, okay? Take your battery and you can just hold it in, kind of makes it easier. All right, put some pressure. Make sure that when you go from safe to the mechanical fire position, the digital control unit does not come on. If it does, the detent you're using is too long. You have to go to a shorter one and we provide multiple detents in your DigiTrigger kit. All right, now, when you go to the third position, that LED should come on, and that should tell you that your digital control unit is active. All right, that's your first test. If enough pressure from your hand holding the grip up turns the system on, then you're using the correct detent. If it doesn't turn it on, you have to use a longer one in your kit. All right, so that's the first test. So I can go ahead, I can put the left grip cover on, and screw that in, that's gonna be your T15. I like to actually just use the driver and do it by hand. This way I'm not over torquing anything. It doesn't require much to fit snug. There is a lock nut in there, so it's gonna take a little bit of pressure. If you have to use a driver, it's no big deal. All right, so get that as tight as you can by hand and that should be plenty. All right, and it'll stop, there we go, it stops. Once it stops, you can give it about a, another eighth of a turn, and that's plenty of torque. Okay, now before we put our back strap on, we're just gonna make sure that everything functions correctly. All right, make sure and fire. Drops the hammer, all right. Now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put our battery in, and we're gonna do a little bit more of a thorough test. So go ahead and lock it in place with the battery door. All right, and before we put our back strap on and screw it on, I'm gonna run the digital control unit through its paces. First, I'm gonna make sure that it activates. So put your hand on the grip safety button, and again, make sure your hammer doesn't drop and hit your lower, and just make sure that it fires and drops the hammer every time. 
Okay, now we're gonna test the pull and release function. So the slider, you can push it in the down position. You don't have to have the back strap on, you can just leave it open for now. Hand on the grip safety, and make sure that it fires when you pull the trigger and when you release the trigger. All right, of course you can kind of run it a little bit. Okay, and if everything works, as long as digital is off when you go to fire or safe, your kit is ready to be fully installed. So just take your back strap, I'm gonna slide it into place, and keeping pressure on it, okay, to make sure it lines up, you just put the two bottom screws and they take a number 10 Torx driver. And again, nothing too tight here, guys. All right, I like to do this by hand so I'm not over torquing anything. All right, again, when you're tightening these screws, put pressure on that back strap with your hand so that it stays aligned and everything is nice and snug. And that's it. Your gun is ready to go to the range. Thanks again, guys, for purchasing a Digitrigger 2.2.